Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today, a new craft surface came on the market. This is Scrapbook.com's Maker Mat, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys, walk you through with a first look, test a bunch of mediums on it, and see if it might be right for you. All right, you guys, this thing is quite huge. It's about 14 and a half inches by 16 inches, which is a great size work surface. I love that they made it that big so that you have lots of space to work. I like that this one, you have a space and then you've got this palette area up here if you want to work with this. Now it also comes along with a collapsible water cup, which I think this is super cool that they included this with and it's not a separate purchase. It has this little kind of hook area that hooks right into here and then it kind of stays put, which is really nice. So it's not gonna knock over or anything like that when you have it locked in, which I really like that because I'm clumsy and water spills if I have it in cups. So this is great that they have it on here. When you have water in here, the reason why there's those little divots is so that you can rub your brush upon it and it really helps to kind of clean the brush out nicely. This is especially helpful when you're using things that are a more solid medium, like an acrylic paint or things like that. Having that in your brush to help clean it out is really useful. All right, now let's talk about what works in this square palette right here. I wanna first start off by saying that little one inch by one inch mini ink pad cubes won't really work inside of here. I've tried it, it, it kinda just hits on the edge there and doesn't really fit in there. But one thing that I really do like about these palettes is they're gonna be great for acrylic paints or pastes if you want to apply them in here and add some water. I like that they got kind of deeper wells in there so that if I wanted to, I can add little spots of reinkers, and that's really helpful to paint along with. So I think I'll be using these slats for my reinkers. you know, add a little bit of water, and then you're really able to paint with these nicely. So you can really get your reinker mixed with water in there, and then you've got a nice, beautiful, solid color that you can go in and paint with. This one happens to be slippery and wet. All right, now one thing I will be testing throughout today's video is if anything stains. I've seen other mats on the market that sometimes stain when it comes to really intense colors like that. So I wanted to make sure that this one isn't going to stain. So, so far, even the really bold reinker didn't stain this one bit. Now when it comes to these two little wells, I really like these ones for the particular reason that I usually put water all over my desk whenever I'm watercoloring, because like I said, I don't love to use a water cup because I'm clumsy. So I like these little ones because you're easily able to fill this well up with water and then go in here and use that as sort of a water palette. You can have one for dirty water and then one to rinse off with clean water. I like that they included these little wells up here too. I think it's super useful. One thing I love about this silicone mat is silicone kind of sticks to your work surface a little bit and it's not gonna move too much. And then when you put your cardstock down on here, if you kind of have a little bit of a grip on it, it's not gonna move too much. One thing I love about this though, is that you're able to still move your cardstock around, right? So if you want to, it's not like it sticks so much that it's hard to grab up. I've worked on craft mats like that and that is a nightmare. It's pretty much only when you're kind of holding it down with at least a little finger stance here that it's gonna make it less slippy and slidey and it's not gonna move all over the place. All right, so let's start off with a little bit of prom queen here. I'm gonna come in on the edge and again, just kind of have a little grip on here and it's gonna really hold it down nicely. Even just the slightest pressure that is gonna kind of make the rest stick a little bit. It's gonna blend really nicely in there like my inks always do. It's still got a nice glide to it. It's not gripping onto my blending tool at all. And it's also allowing, you know, any excess ink on the side to be kind of picked up and used on the surface. Then I'll finish it off with my lightest color, Shooting Star, and blend that right in here. All right, and that is a really beautiful blend. And of course you can add little sprays of water here and there if you want it to kind of react with the water and create a cool bleached effect. Now I just looked on the website and I found out this is heat resistant. So if I spray my background like this and I want to heat it up, let me go with my heat tool here and we can heat it up on our surface. And I just want to kind of test it out, make sure that it doesn't curl up on me or melt. I know that silicone is pretty resilient when it comes to being a work surface and I'm liking it so far. All right, that seems to really withstand the heat nicely. It's not even hot to the touch, which I really like, and our background is nice and dry. Here's where we're really gonna put the mat to the test. Some silicone mats stain, so I brought out the colors that are kind of more intense. So we have Bee Sting, No Diving, and Crown Me, and we're gonna test these out to see if they'll stain my mat or if they come off nice and clean while we create a background. So I'm going to add this ink down onto the surface just in a swiping motion, like that. We'll add down a little bit of Crown Me next. And then we'll finish it off with a little bit of No Diving. 
All right, we'll spray this down with a little bit of water to get our colors moving. And then we'll go in with our piece of cardstock and smoosh it right into the surface there. To lift it off here, we get this beautiful, smooth watercolor background. I love how that looks. That's a great color transfer. And start cleaning and see if everything comes off the mat perfectly. So we'll give it a good wipe. I'm seeing most of the color is coming off clean, but it's really all about the little residue that it might leave behind. So let's see. Yeah, the mat is back to perfectly being bright white and super clean. All right, now let's go in and use our lunar paste. And when it comes to lunar paste, I think this mat is gonna work great with the paste. It is kind of this, this medium that is a little bit harder to clean up off of some surfaces. So I really wanted to put it down on the mat today and test if it's gonna come off clean or how it's going to clean off. To clarify, I used Bee Sting, Roar, Shooting Star, Psych, Tropical Tango, and Trouble Berry. To scrape this nice and smooth, I'm using the new Simon Hurley scraper that comes with two of these in the pack. And all I need to do is just spread this right across the surface and it goes down super smooth, which I think is amazing. It's better than a palette knife because it would be hard to spread these all super smooth and even with a palette knife. How incredible is that pasted background? I love it. And then I'll clean off the excess on another scrap piece of cardstock. It's really easy to just kind of go flat to the surface and scrape any of the excess off of the other side. All right, now when it comes to cleaning up lunar paste, the new scraper tool I think is gonna be one of my go-to ways to clean up when I want to get it off of the surface. So I'm gonna start heat setting this up and hopefully some of it will crisp up so we can see how it dries on the surface and how you get it off. All right, so some of these areas are dry. I'm gonna still go in with a little bit of water and see if anything is gonna come off. And like, yeah, this stuff, I'm gonna swear to you right now, it's this stuff's all dry. And lunar paste does come off really easily with water when it comes to surfaces like this. But if you need any extra help, I would probably recommend using the Ranger Rub It Scrub It Pad. It's got a good textured surface on there. It sounds like nails on a chalkboard, but I swear it gets a lot done. I highly recommend having this in your arsenal to clean extra things off because that made cleaning off the paste way easier. But again, I'm stunned. There is no staining, nothing whatsoever. No sparkle is even left behind, which sometimes happens with my other surfaces. And I think I'll be using this a lot when it comes to lunar pastes. I've talked about some great smaller sticky mats for stenciling that I've really fallen in love with, but some people swear by stenciling on the silicone mat, so I wanted to test it out. I'm using the new Tiny Diamond Stencil. I love these tiny stencils. And I'm going to place down my cardstock right on the silicone mat. Again, I like it because if you hold it down even just a little bit, it kind of stays in place like that. And then I'm going to lay down my stencil over top. Now, this is not magic. Like I said, like when you hold it down a little bit, it tends to stay a little bit better. But if I'm blending, it's not going to hold down my stencil by any means. But I do love to kind of stencil quickly sometimes. And if that means just holding it down with a couple fingers to one side like this, and then going in and blending down on the other side, it really is kind of nice for that. And it is quite helpful. One thing I found is that if you're using just a normal work surface, you're having to really put tons of pressure because sometimes your cardstock might shift underneath even if you're holding down your stencil. So I do like that if you apply a finger's pressure on here, it is gonna hold down your stencil pretty nicely. And then all you have to do is just move your fingers as you're blending where they were, then lift it off, and there we have our blended background. So like I said, that kind of is a little bit nice. If you're just doing a quick blending, I'm gonna shift my stencil here with the little diamonds like this. I'm gonna go in with another color to test it out one more time. All right, for this one, I'm going in with a little bit of Shooting Star, and I'm just going to quickly blend over the top. And yeah, I do have to say, this is easier than stenciling on just a normal surface because it's got that slight little bit of grip to it when you're holding it down. So I do have to make note of that. I love that about this, but it's not magic. It's not gonna hold down your stencil by itself, right? There still is effort with making sure your finger is there to hold it in place. And look at that beautiful background we get with the tiny diamond stencil. I absolutely love how that one looks. One thing I also wanna say is I love the idea of traveling with this mat because it's a lot more easily able to bend and be folded up like this. So you can place it in a bag or a suitcase rather than some craft sheets are a little bit more delicate and will break if you fold them up like that. So I like not having to worry about it and then slapping it on a table wherever you are and easily being able to work on your craft mat. All in all, you guys have to decide if this mat is right for you, but I wanted to share all the details about it in case if you're interested. I'll have links down below to the mat and anything that I used in today's video and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting tutorial.
Have a great day. Bye.